I feel like in general, the NICU gets that rep for, oh my gosh, you're a NICU nurse. Oh my gosh, I bet you're holding babies. And it's just, it's just such a happy place. It's so many times where I have people, you know, that are veteran nurses and I come in, you know, give you your initial report. It's, oh, you know, oh, you're off orientation. You're by yourself. Like they're, you know, kind of questioning if you are ready. And then it's like asking you double triple checking if you did stuff you're telling them like oh yes i already did that i already did that and you come in the next night so we transition you know i give her a report and they're like okay thank you you come back the next night to get report back from that same nurse and they're halfway ready they forgot to do this they forgot to do that they're laughing it off and you're just sitting there like is this the same nurse I just got a report from earlier that made me feel like I didn't know what I was doing? But now it's jokey, jokey, ha ha. Knowing what fluid goes with what issue, if my baby's having sugar issues, do I give it normal saline? Do I know what fluids are compatible with TPN? Can I run dopamine with TPN and lipids? Can you answer these questions? So a few things that if I had to give myself some advice or What's up YouTube? Welcome to Money Conversations. How are you guys doing today? Before we even start, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at the Riddler Jada, and we can start. So as you can see by the title, we will be doing a NICU update. So at first, I was supposed to do a three-month update. Y'all know I started February 7th. It's literally the day I started my job, and it is now July. So it has been five months. It has been five months, so we can call this a five-month update. It's almost about to be six in August, August 7th, so we're kind of almost at that year and a half mark. Oh, my God. Well, I can't even believe it's been a year and a half, so let's get right into everything so if you are new to my channel i started in the nicu february 7th as i stated graduated in december took my NCLEX pass and then i moved to atlanta to start my job so five months later five months later i am officially on my own uh, i don't have a preceptor i am on the unit like any other nurse on the unit you know i still ask for help i still be you know asking questions it is so good always be a nurse Aside from when you get off orientation, always ask questions. I don't care what specialty you're in. For my orientation at my hospital, I started on day shift and I did day shift for about three, four months. And then let's say about three months and then I'm transitioned to night shift. So that transition for me, first of all, was a lot. And I won't say it was a lot. It was more so a lot because when you transition from day to night, it's more so of a more so a first of a lifestyle change like we live our life in a day from a nikki standpoint transitioning from day to night on day shift it's more so all the doctors are there we're changing plans of care um my hospital is an education hospital so they're rounding all the doctors are in one huge huddle and you're expected to be there at your bedside it's kind of more changing fluid rates the doctors are asking you to carry out these things social work is working around parents are coming um they were admitting babies it's more so um that type of workflow more of the professional kind of but we still have our touch times in comparison the night shift is way different it's not as many doctors yes we're still expected to be at the bedside for a report we actually give a report to the doctors on day shift it was more so the doctors come they talk about the plan of care on night shift i'm expected to be at the bedside let them know what's going on with the baby from a full rundown on night shift as well it's more of giving baths we have bath nights it's more of weighing the baby measuring the baby changing the suction canisters um changing the linen uh doing the cold car like it's more of the background that you know making sure the baby is stable getting everything back fresh you know on top of the feeding and if you do have a critical baby don't get it twisted you could be doing fluid changes you could be changing the rates i just did a rate change the other night on my baby fluids i actually just sterilely changed fluids the other day 
because the nurse didn't have to have time to do an orange shift. That is a day shift task, but look, just as quickly, you can still do it. So don't think just because you switch to days or now you're on nights, you won't do any of the tasks you have because trust and believe me, I'm living proof. I just did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like in general, the NICU gets that rep for, oh my gosh, you're a NICU nurse. Oh my gosh, I bet you're holding babies. And it's just, it's just such a happy place. And oh, they're so cute. Yes, that, that is definitely true. You know, and you definitely have your feeder growers where they were born a few weeks early. They haven't really picked up their suck, swallow, breathe complex or whatever. And they're just the cutest. They just want to sleep, you know, get some more time to develop. And they're just the most loving little creatures ever. But as well, we have those critical babies that get born, you know, 26, 27, 28 weeks, or the other net, your micro preemies, 21, 22, 23, or, you know, your early 30 weekers, where we kind of got to leave that baby alone in their isolate to develop, set the humidity and everything. So you have different, you have different levels of NICU. And I think that's what people need to understand, which I knew that. Um, I already understood that coming over. I did not think I was just going to be sitting there holding babies, but that's the rep you get. I feel like in nursing, everybody has that one thing you do and people just run with it. You know what I'm saying? So some things I wish I knew before starting the NICU would be how intense it can get. Like I was always aware, like the baby's getting born early. Of course, we're going to have to put some life measures into place, some critical life measures into place because this baby isn't getting it. So a few things that if I had to give myself some advice or if I had to give myself, if I was watching this video in February and I was like, Jada, please tell me what, what could I look up to make me more prepared for the NICU? You're going to have to go through that phase of not being prepared at any job you get. You cannot possibly know everything, so don't think you need to know that. But here are some little things that I wish I knew that I would would have looked up, you know. Knowing your sugars, knowing your vital signs for the babies. I already had like a little base level. I knew, you know, infants breathe higher, their heart rate was higher, but like specifics like the blood sugars and stuff like that. In nursing school, they drill adult labs, adult vital signs into us, knowing sugars, you know, 60 to 100, you know, all those. So um, in the NICU, your hospital may have different practices, but for for example, my like my doctor's orders always say all the time, notify if sugar is less than 40, higher than 120, you know what I'm saying? And sugar is a big thing in the NICU. Like when we admit a baby, one of the first thing we do is um, get a blood sugar on them. And when I tell you, you get that blood sugar and it's 19, literally I admitted a baby the other day and it was like that. They're going to press you about getting some detent started or stuff like that. And knowing how to anticipate things. Yes, I knew like little fluids, but knowing what fluid goes with what issue, if my baby's having sugar, it issues do i give it normal saline do i know what fluids are compatible with tpn can i run dopamine with tpn and lipids can you answer these questions no it's okay because a couple months ago i couldn't either go look that up go go look that up because that is that is something you will do in the NICU all the time and i wish i would have took more time to learn simple things like that the NICU and babies I feel like in the adult world, we drive CPR, heart, 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 heart. In the NICU, we are so respiratory driven, like, you know, CPR and our algorithm is called NRP, um, neonatal resuscitation. We do so many steps before we even start chest compressions. You're going to do, I think it's not even to seven, eight minutes into our algorithm that we do uh, chest compressions. NICU is so respiratory driven, like... You got to think about it. The ba the baby's body surface or like the body is less to travel. You know, the thought process is with CPR is there's still oxygen in the blood. And if we can pump that around an adult, we can still get oxygen to the brain and get, you know, the heart back beating and everything. For a baby, it's not really much of a circulatory system, especially if they're born early. Most of the time, that heart, those ducts haven't even closed off yet. So we're still trying to, you know, get everything together. 
we're they're breathers they're breathers so it's mostly respiratory that's what i wish i would have knew so looking up and knowing things like you know your low flow nasal cannula high flow nasal cannula cpap bubble cpap oh ventilator intubation intubation blood gases those are so like that is almost the heart of the NICU. It's so funny. I'm saying the respiratory is the heart. Literally, I learned I have learned so much about respiratory. Like I have babies that are intubated all the time. Do you think I was not in nursing school? You couldn't have paid me a million dollars to tell me most of my patients would be intubated. I would have been like, no. I'm going with babies, women. I'm not gonna be looking at no intubated patients. That's literally what I would have said. And now I've had more intubated patients than anything. Like SIMV, my baby stay on a vent if I get, you know, a more critical baby. You know what I'm saying? If I don't get a feeder grower, uh, my baby's on CPAP, nasal CPAP. You know, all these different little things I just told y'all, my baby, like it's respiratory driven. So if anything, if you don't listen to anything I say in this video, Go look up some respiratory for um, the NICU. That's that's what I would, that would be the strongest highlight. If anything, if you walk in there knowing some stuff about your respiratory, you walk in there knowing some stuff about TPN, nutrition, stuff, compatibility, then you're great. The other stuff you're gonna learn as you go, like, you know, babies eating every three hours, you know, changing diapers, skin assessments, always assess the skin. Like I have had already as a new grad, I've had some good catches of like something we didn't assess because we, you know, we think of babies like, let me just give you some advice my preceptor gave me because I don't want to, you know, say too much or whatever. My preceptor sat me down one day after we had like a maybe a 24, 25 weeker and I didn't know what to do because it was just like, oh my gosh, this baby is so, so small how do I even approach this baby? My preceptor told me, and I will never forget this, you will do the same assessment for every baby. I don't care. Babies can come in, you know, in plastic, the plastic wraps because they're so small. Babies can come in on on cooling. And you know, you don't want to lift them off the cooling blanket or with HIE, you know what I'm saying? Different babies come in so small but you're going to always do your the same assessment if you I, because i can promise you this literally just happened if you don't do part of your assessment because you think oh the baby's too small it can't tolerate that i promise you you're going to miss something do the i don't care Just flip that baby over you know do it gently you're going to do different you know you're going to use different touch and approach it differently for different babies you know you can't just pick a 23 weeker up the way you can a 39 is 40 weaker you know what i'm saying that's that's what i'm really trying to get for you guys because still to this day it takes me a lot to understand that because when your baby's intubated and as soon as you touch the baby and you see the sats drop in 60 70 that's that's another thing i want to talk about the sats are way different like for adults you probably would drive yourself crazy if you seen adult patient sets in the 50s but in the NICU, we're looking like, oh, Lord, my baby. <laughs> Let me give him some manual breaths. Let me, you know, get a respiratory therapist. But we really control, like, we really run those practices ourselves in my NICU. And it's just like getting, giving your baby those breaths, make sure you're suctioning the baby and getting them back. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I will say mentally as a nurse, I feel like I'm growing a lot. It, it makes me feel better. A lot of nurses on my unit, they tell me all the time, like, I can tell you're going to be a good nurse. I had a, <laughs> I had a respiratory therapist uh, tell me one time, be like, Jada, you know, you're a hard worker. Like, one thing about me, if anything, I'm going to try, and this is actually a downfall of myself, any tasks that I, I'm supposed to be doing or any, like, when I get report and I hear what I need to do for the baby, I'm going to try everything in my power to complete everything. You're not going to be able to complete everything. Now, I'm not saying don't do a task because you know, oh, they can do that too. No, if it's in your power to do it, do it. But don't burn yourself out doing it. And that's where I need to learn. Having that voice also to pass off things. I don't be feeling comfortable. You know, a lot of nurses in the NICU are older than me. 
and I'm the new grad, you know, I just graduated, so I've barely been a nurse for, it's, I haven't even been a nurse, like, some of them have been a nurse for how long I've been alive, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, the other day, I told y'all, on night shift, we do these cold cards. A cold card is basically, you take the baby's weight, and if there was a cold situation, there's about 10 medications on there, and you multiply it, you know, you do, you do mad math after nursing school, don't leave that, please, that's another tip. But, you know, it's like 10 emergency, you know, epinephrine, all that. Um, medication so if there was emergency we don't kind of sit there and calculate oh you know the baby's uh 1700 grams we need to um no you wouldn't do all that it's all listed and you have to do that every sunday so the nurse is responsible for doing it two nurses look at it and sign it off but night shift is responsible so i did it you know i did the whole thing i check it off three times just because i'm that type of nurse but i didn't get a second signature because we were a little I'm not gonna lie, we were a little short staff that night. Everybody's, you know, doing their stuff for change of shift. I'm like, dog, I did not get a second nurse to check it off. So, you know, I'm about to give a report. I'm like, you know what? I'll just ask the day shift nurse to check it off. Not a big deal. I didn't complete all the tasks, everything the baby gave the baby the bath, you know, unthawed milk, got you some syringes ready for the next nurse. You know, that's another thing I'll talk about. You know, I did everything possibly. I think the baby, oh, the baby had to get a newborn screening. I did the baby's labs everything done medication given nothing out of the ordinary that the nurse would be like so y'all i go to tell this nurse like hey you know she's like oh thank you you know getting reports she's like okay yes you did everything cool cool so i tell her i'm like oh yeah and the cold car i completed everything could you just look at it and check it off for me you know i did all the math all you need to do is go back over the math to make sure it's correct when i tell y'all and we wear a mask, but when I tell y'all, she looked at me like I just said I didn't do nothing the whole night. Like, and that's what I'm talking about. You're going to get those stares, and it's just going to be like, what is, like, it, it really, it really will dishearten you sometimes. Because it's so many times where I have people, you know, that are veteran nurses and I come in, you know, give you your initial report. It's, oh, you know, oh, you're off orientation. You're by yourself. Like, they're, you know, kind of questioning if you are ready. And then it's like asking you double, triple checking if you did stuff. You're telling them, like, oh, yes, I already did that. I already did that. And you come in the next night. So we transition. You know, I give her a report. And they're like, okay, thank you. You come back the next night to get report back from that same nurse and they're halfway ready they forgot to do this they forgot to do that they're laughing it off and you're just sitting there like is this the same nurse i just got report from earlier that made me feel like i didn't know what i was doing but now it's jokey jokey ha ha and you didn't do anything that you were supposed to do for me, but you kind of made me feel of less of a nurse. And I don't think people understand that. And it's like, after a while, I'm pretty sure I'll learn how to get that. Because I feel like it's a respect thing. And of course, we know nursing is in this culture. Nurses eat their young or whatever. And not all nurses are like that, but you're definitely going to get some nurses like that. A lot of nurses at my job are so sweet. They'd be like, oh, you're going to do so good. As long as you work hard, girl, you got it. You know, just keep that drive of asking questions. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I try to do. I always try to complete everything. I'm always super sweet to everyone, which... I think that will be changing soon because that's what I'm saying. Sometimes I do get ran over and I need to learn how to be more assertive. I was just saying that the other day, like in a, in a situation like that, like I'm not saying that I needed to be like, um, I kind of see a little look on your face. Is, is there a problem? <laughs> like, I don't want to be that assertive because I know some nurses, that's exactly what they would have said. But for me, I would have been like, um, is there an issue? Is, you know what I'm saying? Like something, like, I don't want to stand there and like looking dumb like my mom just yelled at me because that's what I did. So even if you're a nurse and, you know, deal with that, please give me some advice on how to be more assertive because I need it. But yes, um, other things in the NICU that I would say, 
uh dealing with family is a lot sometimes you know you have mothers that are so nice i'll never forget i had this night where i had like three four babies and i had the two of my babies were twins and they were in the same room and um the mom was in there and some parents are very helpful i love when parents are there most of the time some nurses don't like when parents are there i'm a nurse like i just I feel like I'm a new fresh face, so like I don't really have a preference of if parents are there or not. Like some parents when they're there, and I will tell you, I will be honest why some nurses don't like, you know, you have three, four babies or whatever. Parents are asking you questions and I'm not saying it ha doesn't have anything to do with care, but you got three, four other babies you're trying to take care of on top of answering questions that I won't say are not important because any question a parent has important, but of course you have to prioritize care. And as a new nurse, that is even stressful for me because when a parent is asking me a question and I may not know it because parents, you know, they don't know what they can't ask, but I tell them just always ask. It, it eats me up if I can't answer it. I'm over here like, Okay, let me, do I need to drop what I'm doing to go answer this question that probably I could have just handled it better and been like, I have some other babies. I'm going to go do their touch times. I'm going to go do my other baby's assessment, but I will get right back to, to you on that. What time are you leaving? I will have that answer before you leave here, you know? And look, I just said that so perfectly. But in the moment, sometimes I'm like, oh, I feel like I got to go answer it right then. So that's that's sometimes in, you know, in any specialty, you know, when family members come and ask you, it kind of takes you away from, you know, your schedule and plan. You got you come to work like, okay, I'm going to strategize. I know exactly A, Y, and Z what I'm doing. And then you see a parent and they're like, well, can you go get this? Or can you do this? And can we have him to do this? Or, you know, if the parent might feed him, it might take a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? And you still, it's bath night. You need to get baths. You need to do labs. You need to do, you know, any little thing could take you out your element so that's why some nurses are like oh the parents are here you know it's just going to take you a little bit more time that, that's just the honest truth so yeah now back to uh the twin mom i had she was so sweet she was helping me she wanted to learn you know she's like i'm a okay she i set up the bath and gave one baby the bath she set up and did the other one i was feeding the other one while she was giving the bath and you know i'm watching making sure she's doing good like that was like the epitome of a perfect mom like she was just so great and you know the moms are really good and they want to learn sometimes you have those moms that you know are kind of standoffish or whatever and it's just your job as a nurse i feel like to like i'm not saying you gotta make the mom want to learn but always try like don't okay she's not talking to me so i'm not talking to her or that's not my patient the baby is my patient don't be that type of nurse but it was so sweet because <laughs> the mom literally well first of all the nurse the day shift nurse when she gave me a report she was just saying how the mom was like where's the other nurse and i was like oh sorry and she's like no i was like she was like i guess she really liked you and that was my first night by myself so i was like i felt like i was running like a chicken with my head cut off because my other's baby parents were there as well so i'm in between both rooms like okay i'm doing this for you i'm doing this for you i'm answering this question for you i'm answering this question for you and she said like she just said I was a really good a good nurse and it was so funny because when she left she was like okay babies I'm about to go be good for y'all Nikki mama and I was like oh no I'm the Nikki mom <laughs> so yeah you have that parents that will love you but every parent is not going to love you okay please get that through your head because you have some parents and sometimes you know they might have dealt with the nurse like some people take nurses broadly if they have a bad experience with one nurse then they just label it's all bad and it's like you come in here they got an attitude with you and you're like what did i even do to you ma'am i'm so sorry <laughs> like that's literally how you're going to be there's going to be patients like that there's going to be nurses like that there's going to be family like that that's just nursing please get that through your head everybody's not going to like you okay now yeah and patience too the babies <laughs> from one nurse the baby might eat perfectly but for you the baby might not eat at all and that's a night shift thing y'all on day shift i don't know of course and it makes sense even us as adults we eat probably more at 3 p.m than 3 a.m so i'm waking my baby up to eat this bottle and i just gave the baby a bath 
he or she is knocked out. Like, girl, you can take that bottle and do something else. And then you got to feed the baby through the NG tube. And it's like, you know, the day shift nurse like, oh, yeah, um, the baby took all the feeds, P.O. And you're like, yeah, about that. He would not even wake up, show any type of interest for me. Don't force your babies to eat. Don't force your babies to eat. I do not like when nurses force their babies to eat. Like, I will try everything in my power to wake a baby up because you can cause oral aversion. And that's basically when you keep, like, trying to feed a baby and then they just give up. Because babies, they don't really know. They just got here. They're like, okay, I don't like this. I'm just going to die. <laughs> like, literally, like, I don't like what you're doing to me. Boom. The monitors start going off. The baby's deset and the heart rate is dropping. They're braiding in because... They're like, well, I don't like this. I just choked. You basically just tried to drown me. Don't force your babies to eat. I'll always make sure, you know, my babies are showing cues before they eat. And, you know, you can do stuff. It's stuff you can do as the nurse to wake the baby up. I'm not saying keep the baby swaddled, you know, give the bottle. They still knocked out. Unswaddle that baby. Change. You should be changing the diaper every touch time. Changing their diapers will wake them up. You know, like, don't. That cold wipe will, they'll be like, okay, I'm getting up. That wipe was cold, you know, change their diaper, you know, kind of stimulate them a little bit. Like, hey, baby, wake up. You know, sometimes I take their hat off, put it back on, like kind of just mess with them, you know, get their socks or change the pole socks, little things that you already got to do, do that. You know, maybe, you know, change their cover, change their linen, or change their shirt. You see a little something on their shirt. Little stuff like that will wake them up. They're like, girl, you're waking me up. Yes, it's time to get up and eat. You know, because you want to keep their PO up because that's usually what gets them out of there, especially your feeder growers. The doctors are focusing on how much can they PO because you want to be that nurse that at least tries. You don't want the they shift nurse to come back and like, oh, yeah, I fed them all the feeds through the tube. Like, come on now. But, you know, if one feed, the baby is knocked out sleep and you can't do nothing, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? They only, you know, they had a 40 milliliter and they only took 10, you two one. Like, nobody's going to cry about that because that's realistic. There's going to be, like, when you take the baby home, they're not going to eat as much in the morning as in the day. You still teach the moms, like, hey, you do have to wake the baby up to eat, but they probably won't eat as much. You know, they might take two bottles at three and then one bottle or a half a bottle. You know what I'm saying? That's still fine as long as you're waking them up every three hours. All right, you guys, sorry, my camera had died. So <laughs> I was like, whoa, yeah, this video has already got really long. So I can definitely do a part two. My experience has reach all different type of things if you guys have certain questions or certain things certain situations you want to know about just any type of questions y'all got hey i can make next one, the next one like a q a and kind of tailor it but that was just a general one so i'm still building that confidence it's still things that i want to work on as a nurse like i will not know every single thing like it's only been five six months almost about to be six months and i feel like i'm a stronger nurse i feel confident going to work that i can take care of the babies it's still things that scare me like getting an admission or a super super critical baby with like dopamine and you got to do total total fluid volume goals and like it's still things that do scare me like but if i have a baby that's on simv that's intubated i do feel like i could take care of the baby or like oh you got to start an iv uh, i get a little nervous but I have did it multiple times, getting an art stick, drawing labs sometimes, like, it's so funny, the other day I had so many labs, I was knocking them out, like, that doesn't really scare me anymore, it used to, but now it's just like, okay, I gotta draw labs, let me put these heel warms on, let me get it done, like, that's what it's becoming, it's gonna, you know, the more you do something, the more you do something, the more you do something, it's like, okay, like, the other day, when I walked into basically my change of shift admission, like they had just got the baby and that was supposed to be my admission for night shift, but the nurse really couldn't do anything because we were trying to get vitamin K. Vitamin K is very important in the NICU. Y'all should know that you, the baby cannot be sticked um, unless it gets vitamin K. And that's basically to help with the baby's clotting factor. You know, without vitamin K, the baby could, you know, just keep bleeding. So that's basically what it's for. So literally, I'm 
she's trying to give me a report i literally watch her give vitamin k she's like i wish i could help you more and stuff and that's what i'm saying it we're it's a team effort like i'm not gonna have an attitude or be mad i'm sitting here literally while she was doing stuff she was like jade okay i'm gonna give you a report and i'm looking i'm literally in the computer and looking up anything i can see and she was like yeah but you'll probably know more than me because she she's seen me looking in the computer i'm reading the labor and delivery you know all the stuff that happened in delivery like work with your nurse just don't stand there like who's gonna give me a report i just got here i'm not getting a report which i'm not gonna lie that that situation was a lot and that's why i said i gotta work on as a nurse i it's still some things that nurses do and i'm like it's a respect thing like don't I, don't treat me like a certain way because i'm new i still get those vibes and i'm, I'm not I, this is supposed to be the end of the video but all right you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm really really excited um i want to do some more videos give me some more um suggestions y'all would like to see i really want to do a video on why i chose nikki over lnd and mother baby like certain little topics hot topics y'all want to see just let me know but also i think i do want to do a part two to this video because it got long quick so if you have any questions that you want to see in my next nikki experience video let me know or any little video ideas y'all want me to do i love you guys so much <laughs> Can y'all believe it? Y'all probably was just watching my video, passing the NCLEX, and you're like, this girl has been in the NICU for six months. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of myself, too. I definitely see the growth. All right, bye, you guys. Again, follow me on Instagram. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Love y'all.